This video is brought to you in collaboration with Wowhead.com. Hello everyone. Last time, we alerted the Archon about the Kyrian allied to the Jailer. But well there, Bastion, it came under assault from the most unlikely source, namely Maldraxxus. This is another domain within the Shadowlands, which is actually supposed to protect the realm, not invade it. War is brewing, and we need to go in and investigate figure out why the Maldrexi are on the attack. Keep training! If you want to fight, then prove your strength! It seems that there's not much for words around here. So while we prove our worth in the arena, let's explain what Maldrexis is all about. The first ones who have shaped the cosmos. And I'm sure that we're gonna get more details on these first ones later on. They knew that they needed to protect the Shadowlands from external threats and beyond. The Shadowlands, it's, it's not hiding away in an impenetrable bubble. After all, outside forces like the Void or the Light or even some of our troops, they've traveled to this domain. With the cosmic forces in Warcraft in a constant tug of war, balance, it must be maintained and Maldraxxus was their answer. It's the land of the Necrolords and the birthplace of necromantic magic. This is a land which revels in strife and conflicts, but it should also be bound by honor. Those who strove for greatness in life, lived it in pursuit of power, physically, mentally, whatever, they might find themselves sorted into Maldraxxus. And this realm, it, it's one where ambition is rewarded, and where the strong of body and mind thrive, a domain of heroes and villains. It's supposed to be ruled over by the Primus, who is an eternal one, like the Archon and the Arbiter, a legendary weaponsmith, and has become, with the aid of an ally, able to show infinite time ways, a master strategist and tactician. Nearly unbeatable, on the field of battle, and always managed to think ten steps ahead. He was the one that came up with the idea of a system, a system of great houses and barons and eternal war games that allowed their forces, their army, to continuously improve. Despite all of that, the Primus had to leave his seat of power to look for answers and he's been missing for quite a while now, which left the five different houses with their Margraves in charge. There's the House of Constructs with its ruler Margrave Garmal, the House of Rituals with Margrave Sindane, the House of Plagues with Margrave Stradama, the House of Eyes with Margrave Akrek, the House of the Chosen with Margrave Krexus, and then each house, they also come with two barons. Their forces, or at least some of the houses, they're the ones who we've been dominating within the arena until only one opponent remains, but not even a returning champion is able to stop us from claiming victory in the arena. But where are their banners? Which house do they fight for? Look closer, Garmal. We have a living mortal in our midst. Intriguing. Sindane, is this the meddler who fought in our attack? The very one. So, this mortal witnessed your treachery. Your house is invaded bastion, an act that betrays everything the Primus stood for. The Primus is long gone, Crixus. Where is your hunger for glory? Or has the house of the Chosen lost its appetite? We are meant to defend the Shadowlands, not conquered. You will recall your forces, or you will answer to my blade. I think not, Crexus. Your blade shall be broken. Slay them all! Chosen! Standing! Outsider! Hold on. We are getting out of here. I am Baroness Draka. The House of the Chosen stands with you. No time for talk. We move now. We 
can't get away! Brace yourself! Turns out that not all of Maldrexus stands behind the attack on Bastion. Crexus, he remembers the path set before them by the Primus. While Sindane and Garmo, they're out for blood. It's Draka that saves us before they can take ours. This is not the one that we party with during War of Draenor. This is the main universe Draka. Rahl's mother, who in life was not a warrior born, but a warrior maid. Going through trials and tribulations to earn her strength. And then, when the corruption of the first horde became clear to them, she endured and they had the strength to stand up for what was right. They tried to expose it for all to see. Sadly, assassins took them out before they could, leaving them and their baby to die within the wilds. That would not be Thrall's future, of course. Well, as mother, she passed on into the Shadowlands. She got sorted into Maldrexus and then joined the House of Eyes. A strange fit for a warrior soul. Okay. Their ways were not mine. Faster. Again. Eventually, this life after life began to feel right. The House of Plagues lies in ruins. One fifth of Maldraxxus wiped out. It's hard to believe they could be so careless. Perhaps they weren't. No matter what happens now, Maldraxxus must stay true to its purpose. For if we fail in our duty, the Shadowlands will fall. I believe the House of the Chosen still stands with us, and I trust you to deliver this to Margrave Crexus. Now, go. And Draka, be watchful. As one of the House of Eyes, she obtained the skills of a master assassin, put to use to gather intel, even in realms and worlds beyond the Shadowlands. While well, a Margrave, he was smart enough to realize that something was up that the House of Plagues now destroyed. It was not done so by accident. As she rides away to inform Crexus, the necropolis of the House of Eyes is destroyed as well, which takes out two of the five ruling houses. That's the moment when she became one of the House of the Chosen, and now we too must team up with them for the sake of the Shadowlands. War's upon us, so we help them out with shoring out their defenses. And Crexus, he senses great potential within us, potential that has to be tested. A stone stands at the center of the citadel, surrounded by magma. Reaching this stone is a challenge of endurance and fortitude. Or, if you're like me, reaching for your bubble button. This trial, it's usually attempted by the most renowned soldiers. But Crexus, he commands us to attempt the right at once. The realms of death awash in darkness. Treachery begets chaos. Bonds frayed must be restored. The key shall honor the worthy. Looks like the Primus did not leave Maldrexus without some guidance. Many have reached this stone before, but only we discovered its true purpose. Now this blade without a hilt, it, it's quite useless. But thankfully, we do have Bonesmith Hermir at our side. She is the most renowned smith in all of Maldrexus, and also the last remaining apprentice of the Primus himself. She is able to forge it for us, after we gather the materials. Nothing is given in this domain, everything must be earned, and even just forging it is a battle. But with its final guardian slain, the Rune Blade belongs to us. The ambition to rise above all others. Ah! Well, I forged it. But clearly you are the only one meant to wield it. Go on then. First you bring war. Now a blade of the Primus. Your legend grows, mortal. 
The Primus embodied the five traits of the ideal Maldraxxi soldier. The ambition to rise above one's foes and the might to crush them. The insight to discern their plans and the guile to outwit them. The relentless pursuit of victory, even in the face of inevitable defeat. Five traits, five runes upon the blade. The same runes etched onto the seat of the Primus. The seat of the Primus has been locked shut since he went missing. Many have tried to open it. The Primus was a legendary weaponsmith. If we hold the key to his vault, then his arsenal will be ours. It won't be long before the other houses learn of the blade. Be ready for a fight. Crexus was right. We hold the key to the seat of the Primus. It will do us no good if our house falls in battle first. We must not lose focus on the war. This room blade, it could be the key to victory in Eldraxxus. But we're going to need to prove our worth, gather more runes, and help out others within the lands. First up is going to be the ruined side of the House of Eyes. Whereas Draka, she might have found a new home as Baroness amongst the Chosen, Lady Vush, she is not willing to move on before claiming vengeance for her Margrave. This is indeed our Lady Vush, the same Naga, former Highborn that allied with Illidan Stormrage and Kilfa Sunstrider. She was slain by us during the Burning Crusade, but luckily she is not holding any grudges. Her focus is on those who hurt her Margrave. When the explosion happened, she was on a mission to investigate suspicious behavior in the House of Rituals, and it seems like their hunch was right. With the House of Eyes eliminated, our secrecy has been assured. None remain who will impede our work. Our new Baron bids that I complete the ritual personally. Harvest the anima before my arrival. Do not fail me, Mephanes. A new Baron walks amongst the House of Rituals, which will be worries for later. Right now, we need to lure Morbitan in a trap. The trap is set. Now we lure Morbitan to his doom. Master, our preparations are complete. We await your arrival. Finally, the power our new Baron promise shall now... No! The ritual, it is ruined! Mephanes, you incompetent fool! It is you who are the fool, Morbitan. And your folly has brought your demise. Wicked spy, curse you! And your fallen house! Horagoric! Belamer underlies. Such is the price for your treachery! But... What power still lingers in the air? The so, you hold the key to the seat of the Primus. Then I will meet you there. It pleases me to know your power has not waned. I would hate to have been slain by a weakling. It is good to fight beside you again, Bosch. Save your pleasantries. Next up, we head on over to the House of Plagues, where we meet up with Plague Devisor Metalev. Ah, there you are, my apprentice. We have much to do. Merilith kinda lost it, and who can blame them when looking at the devastation brought to their house? Beautiful experiments were performed here, plagues were perfected, and now 
it's it's all gone, including their mark rave. Maybe some of the journal pages written by Marilyn will give us some idea as to what happened here. In the Primus's absence, civil war is surely on the horizon. Margrave Stradama confides her fears in me. Without Anima, our work, and thus our power, has stagnated. The House of Rituals has offered to provide us with Anima. Stradama and I both suspect duplicity, but our house is in no position to refuse. We must remain vigilant. None can openly accuse the Liches of treachery. So I have instead devised a new potion, a last resort to protect Stradama should the need arise. I pray that it never does. The House of Plagues, annihilated. Oh, where is Stradama? I must craft the potion. I... I... Uh, uh, must... Um... Duplicity from the House of Rituals. That is what caused all of this. And for poor Merylith, their final thoughts turn to completing a potion for the Margrave. They don't even remember why or what it might do, just that it needs to happen. So let's help the poor thing out. Who beckons me? Who dares have their voice to my torment? Wait, this potion? Merylith? My Margrave, what has befallen you? No, I cannot do this. I must... Dear Merlin, forgive yourself. I am lost, but you must endure. No more. No more. No more. No more. The insect to the soul of your bones plans. I shall endure for you. Oh, Apprentice! <laughs> there you are! I'd be delighted to help you with your own project. I will meet you soon, my Apprentice. It's very nice of Merylith and their plague friend Kevin to bring us some cake for this joyous occasion. Last up on our list, that's reporting for duty at the front lines, where Baron Viras himself is leading our defenses. Push forward! Break their line with a frontal assault! Out with it! But sir, that will result in a massive number of casualties. Such as the price of victory! He's quite a brash in his strategies. You'd almost think that he doesn't care about who lives or who dies. Luckily, we have secular mavics to guide his ideas into victory. We advance with minimal casualties, and from our new forward position, we could even strike back at the House of Constructs. But we need reinforcements! Ha! This outsider is worth a hundred soldiers! Go and claim our victory! Constructs, hold this ground! Our victory is at hand! We can't fight our way in. There's too many of them. This calls for a change of strategy. Play dead. If they think you're a lifeless husk, they'll collect you for parts. Go on. I'll create a diversion. Face me, traitors! The House of Constructs will fall! Capture that fool! his defiance. The rest of you, scour the field. Bring me fuel for the body banks. This house of constructs, it shapes flesh to forge bodies for its forces. And here we see their spoils of war. Bodies not only taken from Maldraxxus, but also those slain or taken captive when they attack Bastion. Great! I am not yet a corpse. The others, can you help me find them? The place is quite gruesome. Most of the aspirants were slaughtered and dismembered on arrival. They were the lucky ones. Not everyone dismembered here is completely dead. And sometimes, only a few parts are deemed worthy to take. Like Talus's eyes or Hippocus's tongue. 
This is also the first time that they have carrion bodies to work with. So a whole bunch of new experiments are taking place. From the inside, we fight our way out of there. Until we come across something brand new. A construct made entirely of carrion flesh. My genius must endure. Now to destroy their pet project. Wait! Do not harm it! May we survive? Trust what remains of my fellow Kyrian. They will bear us to safety. Such incredible power! We could even slay their Baron! And claim justice for my fallen kin. But you... are... inferior! <laughs> Taking out a Baron, adding the first Kyrian construct to our ranks. All in all, not a bad assault, all things considered, and another rune added to our collection. The might to crush your oh, no. That blade! It was forged I will report to Vyraz and then join you at the seat of the Primus. I am listening. Yours is a legend I wish to witness myself. Strong survive. We will report to Texas. Hold this ground until we return. Ha! As you command, Baroness. See you soon. Riding through our house, we can see that something terrible has happened. Virez is the only one left standing after the constructs retaliated. Even our Margrave Crexus has been slain. Without Crexus, victory is out of reach. We must open the seat of the Primus. And what if that hall stands empty? No. The seat is a fool's errand. We are chosen. We rely on strength of arms. We must gather our mightiest soldiers. Even our missing Baron. Was he not lost to the Maw? This mortal claims to have escaped the Maw's clutches once before. Let us put their words to the test. The Baron that came before Draka, he's been lost to the Maw. But we are the special Maw Walkers. Perhaps we can just, you know, pop in, get him out of there and add his strength to our numbers. Let us pop back to Orobos and figure out how to get back into the domain that most would try to avoid. I know not how to locate this missing Maldraxi Baron nor our living allies. But I believe I can help you find Darien Bograin. That's a start, at least. Honored voice, we seek entrance to the Maw. There is but one path to that dark realm. The same route all souls destined for damnation must take. But be warned, mortal. Though you escaped the Maw once, you may not be so fortunate a second time. Well, that's easy enough. You just gotta jump down with the rest of the souls and enter Hell, the domain of the Jailer, where we kinda left Darien to his fate by accidentally teleporting to Orobos. Bolvar has a plan though. He gives us an amulet, and each of the four horsemen, they carry one as well, imbued with a power that links them to one another. After powdering it up a bit, with some dark magic taken at Sylvile's cauldron, it does lead us straight to Darien, who is locked up in a cage. The key we collect from Brethlund the Brand, and just like that, the leader of the Four Horsemen rides with us once more. How long have I been trapped in the Maw? A day? An eternity? Careful, the Jailer's eyes are everywhere. You will never escape the Maw! Ah, I was curious what the Maw Sworn were searching for. You are that mortal who swept through and thwarted the Jailer's festivities. I am Venari, a humble broker trapped in this land of torment. I have a proposition for you. Come.
Venati has been trapped in the mall for quite some time it seems, and she's picked up a fair few tricks to avoid the gaze of the jailer and his forces. She will help us find our missing Baron, but she's still a broker, so the help it doesn't come for free. She wants our shiny new amulet, and since it already serves its purpose, we make the trade. The Morsworn are certainly eager to find you. We need to make this quick. Do not rush us, Broker. There are others who must be saved, along with the Maldraxi Baron. Ah, you speak of the mortals left behind when your friend here escaped. I fear they've been taken to Torghast. That tower looming in the distance. The Jailer keeps his most prized possessions within. Then show us a way to breach that tower. It would be folly to go after them now. Remain focused. There will be time for theatrics later. This must be your missing Baron. Who is there? Must warn the Margrave. I know that voice. Can it be? The Baron is my father? Darian, after all this time. Turns out that our missing Baron is none other than Alexandros Mograin, the Ashbringer, a legendary hero in life in the time that the plague hit the lands of Lordaeron and Arthas walked his road to damnation to ultimately merge with the Lich King. Now, I've done a full video on the story of the Ashbringer, but real short. His blade, it turned the undead in Lordaeron to ash until his eldest son Renaud betrayed him and stabbed him in the back. Alexandros was then claimed by Kelfuzad and turned into a horseman. His youngest son, Darian, ventured into Naxxramas, put his father out of his misery, brought the now corrupted blade to the Scarlet Monastery, where the spirit of Alexandros took out Renault. Then Darian made the ultimate sacrifice at Light's Hope Chapel, saving the day but handing himself over to Kelfuzad and the Lich King. He was turned into a death knight, now serving that which he fought against, until the Ashbringer was purified by Tyrion and the Knights of the Evenblade, they found the strength to step away from Arthas. Fast forward to Legion, where Darion worked with Bolvar the Lich King. Again, they attacked Light's Hope Chapel, only for the light to smite him down. Now it is he who leads the four horsemen, just like his father once did, while Alexandra's spirits, it moved on to the Shadowlands. It ended up in Maldraxxus, and it joined the House of the Chosen. The Knights of the I suggest a tactical retreat. Falter. I will take us to a small alcove near the Waystone that enables your previous exodus. Son. Save your strength, Father. We will have time to speak later. Wait. My sword. Fatebringer. I will have need of it soon. Last time, we were unable to bring anyone else with us through this waystone. But Venari thinks that she knows of a way. Souls, they can be connected. And if the Mograines would attune themselves to our soul, will we activate the waystone? That should allow them to leave with us. Hi, Lord Fordragon. We've escaped the Maw. Thank you for your aid. Draka, we must return to Maldraxxus at once. Margrave Crexus is... Yes, our Margrave has been slain, Ashbringer. The Chosen need your blade, now more than ever. No. Then my warning comes too late. We have been betrayed by one of our own. It was Virez who had me trapped within the Maw. There can be no doubt that it was his hand that struck down our Margrave. Only the strong... We depart from Aldraxxus at once. Virez will answer for his crimes. I must return to Azeroth and tell our allies what we've learned, Father. But when duty allows it, I will stand once more at your side. There will be time for us to speak later, my son. I swear it. Virez! Show A yourself! Relentless pursuit of victory. The mortal returns, along with our wayward Baron. The Constructs failed to finish you, and so did the Maw. How disappointing. Your schemes have brought about your own ruin. Now we will end you! Foolish Mograine. 
Always valuing loyalty over might. But victory lies in one's choice of allies. And with their help, I now claim the mantle of Margrave. I will bury my blade in your skull, traitor! For Crixus! Enough games! Gods, slaughter these weaklings! Honorless coward! Ashbringer, Marwalker, with me! The seat of the Primus is under siege. We must defend it! Virenz yet lives, but we cannot afford to lose the seat of the Primus. With the final rune claimed, we can finally open that door and find out what all of these challenges, what the road the Primus put us on, was all actually for. Slay the mortal! Bring me that rune blade! Raise your sword, Captain! Form out Raxus! The foes of the worthy shall be vanquished! Presence within my sanctum means a darkness has fallen upon Maldraxxus and all the realms of death. Ages ago, the Eternal Ones punished our brother Zoval for his treachery. He was bound within the inescapable maw to be forevermore its Jailer. Now I fear that Zoval did not act alone. I suspect he had ancient allies, and will seek to win others to his cause. That you are hearing this message means my suspicions prove true. Zoval has forged his chains into a weapon, and brought about my defeat. There is but one hope to save the Shadowlands. The Eternal Ones must stand together once more, before the Jailer escapes the Maw. Bring my warning to the Archon, the Winter Queen, and the Sire. They must see to our defenses. Do not let Zoval reach the Sepulchre. The Arbiter is the final key. Protect her, or all is lost. We came to Maldrexus to find out why they decided to step away from their ancient charge of defending the Shadowlands. And now we know that there's treachery amongst their ranks. But there are also those that are noble of soul and willing to set things right. Our allies in Orobos and Bastion. They'll learn of this. But who could have foreseen the delicious lore bombs that the Primus was going to drop? So Zoval the Jailer, he was not always known as the Jailer of the Maw. Once he was their brother probably also an eternal one, until some kind of treachery happened and they locked him away. No details on what kind of treachery, no details if locking him away was actually fair or not, none of that. Those are secrets and mysteries and motivation and plots that will be revealed in the future. So apparently he's been able to turn his chains into a weapon, and from the Maw he's been manipulating events for ages. Potentially the whole story of the Lich King itself and all of its ramifications. Then there are ancient unknown allies somewhere in the shadows. It's, it's a really good start. It sheds a little bit of light on what's going on here, but it also creates so many more questions. I'm sure that more details will come later on. And if you're really curious, I do have a speculation video on the subject. For now though, the Seed of the Primus is ours, but the war's just beginning.
The message of the Prime is, it must reach the others. So we travel back to Orbos, we share what we found out, and our next realm to visit, that will be Arden Wield with the Winter Queen. Our adventures further into the Shadowlands await, but that is going to be for next time. For now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, see ya!